Denise, welcome to ODSC India. Thank you very much, Seamus. It's fantastic to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. You're going to be giving a keynote presentation tomorrow. Um, so we'd love to hear more about your keynote talk, give us some insight into it, but also tell us a little bit about your background, if you yes, would. Yes, indeed. So I am from Australia, in fact, from Australia's government research agency, So, which is a really unique position because it sits between academia and the industry. In fact, we're passionate about translating research into products that people can use in their everyday life. And we developed Wi-Fi, for example. So uh, from that perspective, it's, it's unique in that we, we have that, um, those examples where we see how good research or interesting research has really transformed life. And specifically in the area that I'm in, so my area is life science research, specifically genomics. And genomics is going to revolutionize medical um, research or medical care because it holds the information for your future disease risk, and now we have the technological um, power to actually change your genome in order to uh, ensure a healthier life. So this is really interesting and exciting time to be in that space. Excellent, and not to kind of get ahead of your keynote, but um, what are some of the key talking points you're gonna, going to discuss tomorrow? Yes, so with the data that really comes out of life science, um, approaching it with traditional compute is not really possible anymore. Similarly with um, applying traditional um, algorithms to it. Therefore, what we need to do is we need to come up with bright ideas from the community, from ourselves in AI and machine learning to really make applications possible that you know, a couple of years ago have not been possible or thought possible. For example, we now are able to interrogate the three billion letters of the genome to really identify which genes can drive disease or predict your future disease risk, which is quite amazing, I think. No, that's excellent. Because um, over the years, we've had quite a few talks uh, around um, life science at ODSC, um, using predictive analytics to diagnose uh, diabetes, for example, and um, predict patient outcomes. Um, we had some talks recently around using AI for drug discovery. So uh, how much do you think the, uh, has the hype kind of run in run front of the reality of it? No, no, I think we're just starting. I think we're just starting to scratch the surface because there will be more and more data available. In fact, mm -hmm. by 2025, 50% of the world's population will have been sequenced. That's a staggering oh. amount. Yeah. So when we typically think of big data disciplines, we think of astronomy, maybe Twitter, YouTube, but genomics is going to eclipse all of that with 20 exabytes new data generated per year. And therefore, um, you know, with that amount of data, machine learning, you know, that's, uh, that's everyone's dream in machine learning to play around with this kind of, this kind of data. Right, that's the original um, data science of scale, or uh, big data problem, right, exactly. So, um, yeah, now with new computing power coming online, have you looked much in the hardware side, for example, using, using TPUs and, other advanced hardware to help solve some of these problems? Yes, although I have to say that the advances in Hadoop and Spark might be able to eclipse that, not because they're more powerful, but because the questions keep changing in life, in life science all the time. Like, once you've solved a certain domain area, you want to move on to the next one. Therefore, building something that is you know, based on um, hardware accelerators and things like that, we don't have the luxury of actually doing that. Therefore, all our algorithms need to be disposable so we can develop something specifically for that question. Once we solved it, move on to the next one, and Spark and Hadoop allows us this flexibility. Oh, excellent. And is there much employment of um, open source deep learning tools in the life science at the moment, like are you using MXNet or TensorFlow? Is there app applications there that you're employing? With? Yes, absolutely. Not necessarily in the area that we're in, because yeah. our data set is just too, um, too detailed. Three billion letters in the genome, finding the disease gene, which means that you know, we need to have a three billion feature matrix. No deep learning technology can deal that's with that's that. True, yes. But in saying yeah. that, the genomic um, architecture 
is actually quite complicated. It's not only the genome, but there's an epigenome, and then all of that is folded, like the two meters of the genome is actually folded into that tiny little cell. So all of that complexity is not captured by traditional machine learning methods, but deep neural networks could actually do that. So from that perspective, there is a game changer for uh, specific questions where you have a small number of features, for example, predicting whether a SNP is going to be deleterious, which is a mutation in your genome. And for that, you only need the immediate surroundings of the genome, and therefore, looking at the genome, the actual sequence, the epigenome, how it's translated, and how it's folded, and having these layers in the deep neural rep network represented is quite exciting. Oh, that, that is very exciting. And do you see a lot of people coming out of life sciences um, seeing the promise of machine learning and data science for life science and starting to adopt those skills? Is there, is there a lot of take up on that? Yeah, although I would say it's not more than in any other Same discipline because yeah. machine learning is going to revolutionize you know every aspect That's right. so from my perspective we are you know in the in the midst of it uh, developing contributing and i think one of the key messages really from my talk will be that as a community we really need to work together irrespective of what the domain expertise is the underlying methodologies that we develop can be applied to the different areas wonderful and uh, last question how are you finding odsc india Yes, it's fantastic to be here. I mean, obviously, I'm simulated already. <laughs> but, you know, the amount of education and diversity of, of domain areas in the audience is quite astonishing. In that, usually, I'm coming from academic conferences where there's a robust discussion around, you know, whether the technology that you're applying is actually the correct one. Right. And you don't expect to have that kind of healthy interactions from the audience in a conference like this, but it is, is actually quite unique in um, teasing out those really interesting conversations between the speaker and the audience, and between the audience, actually. Wonderful to hear. So, Denise, thank you so much for uh, being here, for being a speaker, and looking forward to hearing your keynote tomorrow. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here.